Hello, my name is Dan Presson. I'm the City Council Representative for Ward 1 and Mayor Pro Tem here in the City of Cape Girardeau. I'm joined today with Assistant City Manager and Director of Community Services, Trevor Pulley. Trevor, welcome to the City of Cape Girardeau and we're gonna ask you a couple of questions just about uh, your background, uh, about the future of the City of Cape Girardeau and how we can, we can look to you whenever it comes down to, to community development. So welcome on behalf of the City Council to the City of Cape and tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, sir, I appreciate it. As you alluded to, I originally uh, grew up here in the city of Cape as a child, uh, went to high school until my, uh, I believe my sophomore year. Then my uh, mother decided we had a farm down in Bloomfield. She moved us down south, returned to graduate out of SEMO, uh, was up here, and then began uh, law enforcement down in Stoddard County for a year and then transferred up here to Cape PD for approximately 10 years. Uh, Cape Girardeau is a wonderful place to live, work, and there's just so much, many opportunities here that uh, for people to actually turn back home and work. The City of Cape was so gracious to allow me to return back home and to finish one of my careers back. Uh, I think the way uh, development's going here in the city, I think a lot of younger people and other people that have left, they need to look back into the City of Cape and try to return just as I did to uh, come back home. You know, you, you say a really neat thing there because the city of Cape has changed a lot over the past 20 years, 10 years, five years. Uh, there's a lot of growth and there's a lot of development. How can the city of Cape Girardeau, from a community services perspective, um, how can we continue to facilitate that growth? Well, like you stated, the city has changed over time, even when I was a child. Just go down to your downtown area, look at all the businesses, all the restaurants, some of the especially local owned restaurants. You still have a lot of the same businesses that were here then that are still thriving, but your ma major downtown, they're doing very well. Uh, just come on up Broadway, look at a lot of the restaurants, the coffee shops, places to eat, a lot of the revitalization of some of these buildings that are going on. That's thankful to a lot of the developers in town and also to the city council. The council has allowed the developers here in town and just outside of town to uh, develop some of the older buildings, revitalize them so the citizen Cape are able to uh, partake in a lot of the new items and some of the local owned restaurants. You know, we've got a lot of really great things, especially going on whenever it comes to our downtown core. As a person that, that works with developers, what can we tell a developer to ensure them that the future of Cape Girardeau is bright and that we're going to continue to work for those developers to make sure that they can get all of their, their great ideas through here in the city of Cape? Okay, currently, uh, development side, you have your planning, you have your engineering, and you have your inspections. So right now we're trying to make a whole new plan for developers that are coming into the city to make it a little easier, a little more customer friendly, as you would say, for them to work inside the city. We have some plans coming along in the near future to have a commercial division, a residential division on your inspection side. Now, I'm not gonna apologize for our inspectors to go out and make sure things are built correctly. The city of Cape prides themselves on on the realty side, if you build a residential home here in town, be expected to have some inspections done on the house because when you buy a new home here in town or one that's already been built, you wanna make sure you're getting a very good product. I was fortunate recently to purchase a house here in town. It had, went through inspections, very well built by several of the good developers here in town. Uh, so hopefully with the new structure, what's going on in development inspections, it won't take the developer that time through plan review to get things done. They can build quicker. They know exactly what to expect here in town and uh, move forward a lot quicker. Excellent. Do you have a lot of experience dealing with uh, some of these historic buildings that we have? We've got a beautiful historic downtown yes. and sometimes those historic buildings take something a little different when it comes to development. And so yeah. have, you, have you ever dealt with some of those things? Actually, I owned a very, very old home that was in a historical district and you need to rebuild them the way they were meant, to, the, the way they were built. They're built very, very well. It's just they need a little bit of uh, care to them. But you don't ever want to take the original facade away. You want the same character that was originally built for your downtown and your historical districts to stay. That's what people like to see. But they can always be updated in a way that it looks the same, 
but it operates a little bit better for that for that building. Absolutely. You know, you're, you're a unique public servant because you've had uh, multiple different roles within a community municipal government. You, you've been in the policing side, you've done other things. Uh, tell us a little bit about your career and, and sort of some of those, those interesting lessons that you've learned along the way about public service. Well, I've been fortunate in my career. I've worked for two just amazing cities, Cape being the first one. Uh, Cape's allowed me to work in the police side first learn a lot of aspects of the city of Cape. I had to leave Cape for family issues. I needed to take care of my grandparents and my mother at the time. So I had to leave the city for a little while, take care of family, and fortunately and graciously, the city of Cape allowed me to come back. So as you work in construction, I worked in construction for years and computers with the police department and city government as a city manager for the city of Dexter. So I've been fortunate to learn a lot of different aspects of a city, how they run, what different aspects, what different departments, how they work and what's needed for the city. And like I said, the city of Cape has been very gracious to allow me to come back home. And hopefully with the experience I've had, I can help the city do what they need done and what you ask of me so I can assist. Okay. You know, there's a lot of bright opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of great development opportunities in this community. Um, where do you think some of our, our challenges lie? Uh, housing. Cities nowadays right now need some more housing. If you don't have housing, you won't have the major developments come into your cities because they won't have the workforce. Every, every city around Missouri and America always needs some more housing because you have a lot of big companies coming in and some companies need, they may need anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 employees. If you don't have a place to put those employees where they're residing, living, they won't come. Yeah. So the developments in every city, they're always fighting for these large companies, large developments to come to their cities. I think the city of Cape is very innovative on their development side. They're always building new neighborhoods, bringing new families in I would just like to see some of the ones that have left Cape. Please look at Cape again and come back. Yeah, that's a that's a sentiment I share with a lot of people all the time. Is you know, give us a look. You know, yes. come come back. We've got great great lifestyle opportunities, excellent work and employment opportunities. So there's lots of good options. It's here not in Cape. what it was 20, 30 years ago. Sure. There is so much more to the city of Cape. You have a lot of uh, different venues you can visit, a lot of restaurants, uh, entertainment. Uh, the city's growing, mm -hmm. and I would love to see what's going to happen in the next five to ten years here in the city. Oh, there's endless potential, and that's the fun thing about it, is that you're joining the city of Cape kind of at the pre precipice. You know, yes. we're, we're going to start seeing some, some really great change, and it's just going to be exciting to, to move forward. Yes, it is. The city is working on a brand new project out the airport. The airport's going to be larger and better than it's ever been. I mean, once this facility is done, there's no telling what type of flights, what type of people is going to be able to come and go through the city of Cape. I mean, you're going to put this airport with up, up there with a lot of other ones in the area, and uh, it's just going to be amazing what, what this project's going to do for the city. Absolutely. You know, just like every other city in, in the United States, we have some of our infrastructure problems. You yes. know, we've got issues where we've got potholes, and especially at this time of the year, after we've had the freezing and the thawing and the freezing mm -hmm. and the thawing, uh, you know, how do you work with, with customers? How do you work with citizens to, to reassure them that we're on the right track, that we're fixing everything that we're trying to fix? How, how can we reassure the people of Cape Girardeau to know that, that we are working every day to make sure that we are filling those potholes and we're, we're figuring out the things that they need us, to, need us to know? Funny you should ask that. I actually, on the way here, uh, I was actually speaking with uh, Public Works, which I've been fortunate to work with a couple different public work systems. We've got one of the best around. Yeah. Our public work system, our street and our water, one of the best there are. Uh, I was talking to them about a couple complaints that I received from citizens on potholes. Uh, contacted them, they put that on their list, and by the time I was coming back, they had already started on one of them. Wow. So now, in turn, some of the streets in Cape Toronto are not taken care of by the city that's taken care of by MoDOT. So some of the streets out there, they may have potholes that we can't control. But the ones in the city street, our street department is on it. 
uh, they're actually working on it today. I called them and they're going to get started on it. And I had a call yesterday on another one of the big thoroughfares. It's actually uh, going to be on TTF six. Oh, great! And the entire street's going to be repaired next year. So we have streets already lined up to be repaired. It's just it's a time frame. So TTF six is going to be taking care of one of the large streets in town by the end of 2024, and it's going to be all repaired. That's fantastic. So our TTF systems, they do work. Some of our big thoroughfares are actually getting repaired. So the residents of town will have a nice drive to work. You know, the thing that I always have to remind folks is that it does take time. You know, yes. it takes it takes time to, to, to assemble the funding. It takes time to assemble the, the staff. You know, obviously staffing is always a thing. And so we need to make sure that it does take time to fill those potholes, but we get there. And, and it just takes us a little moment, but the city of Cape will get there with either the pothole filling truck or they'll get out there with, uh, with one of our public service, service employees and, and uh, get it taken care of. Yes, they will. We're just like a private business when it comes to manpower. Right now, if you go to some of the restaurants, some of your local shops in town, you notice there's not as many employees. I'm not going to name some of the places I was at, but the employees were very gracious. There was two in one of the places one morning this week. They were doing everything they could to get the product out and get everybody served, but they still had a smile on their face. Same thing here as in the city. We may be several down. But if you go talk to any of our employees, they usually have a smile on their face and they're doing everything they can to service the city. Now, you know, having come back to the city of Cape Girardeau after a couple of years away, and it's one thing that I'm always amazed at, we have incredible employees in this town. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, you, everybody from police, fire, public works, uh, staff here at City Hall. I mean, it is incredible the amount of talent that we have here in the city of Cape Girardeau. And everybody's working for a better future. It is. I'm gonna take something out of the police chief playbook from the previous meeting a few hours ago. He was uh, stating he had one of the best police departments in the, in the area and around. I'm gonna also reiterate that. Being in law enforcement as police chief prior, a lot of the police departments around here look to the Cape Girardeau Police Department for advice and also what are they doing to better their police department. Fire departments, the same thing. You've got one of the best fire departments. They just help the entire city, the residents and the businesses with lowering their ISO rating. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a big issue. People will look at the article and say, oh, it's just a rating. It's not, that is a big priority for them. Your public works, some of the best around. We had a major ice and snowstorm last week. Do you know every one of those ladies and gentlemen came to work every day to clean your streets? I was out and about every day that week and also around different places. We had some of the cleanest streets around. If you would have went down Independence, it was clean. Yeah. That was Tuesday morning, I drove to work. Independence was clean. That was amazing. Yeah. And just your other departments, I don't want to forget any of them. You have your development team down here. They work constantly. Yes, they do. Your city hall. And you also have to tell the city council is amazing in this area. They have the best interest for the city of Cape Girardeau. You know, you, there, there's just a lot of heart in this yes. city hall. And I think it's really fitting that over the past couple of years, we renovated one of the sentinel buildings of Cape Girardeau, the Common Police Courthouse, into city hall. Yes. And so where we sit is part of Cape Girardeau history. And yes. where we go from here is part of Cape Girardeau history. And so it's, it's a unique, unique place to be, to be in, uh, in, this, in the place where it started and, uh, and to kind of push everything towards the future. Yes, that's why I wanted to thank the council for allowing me to come back home in this beautiful building and to see how much Cape has grown and what's gonna happen in the next five, 10 years. It's gonna be amazing what's gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, we've got so many programs going right now, new developments. It's going to be amazing what happens here in town. Yeah, there, there's so much going on, and I can't thank you enough for being with us here today and just talking with us about you know your background and kind of where you see the future of the city of Cape Girardeau going. Uh, this is a dynamic community full of dynamic people, and we have a dynamic future. Yes. And, um, and I'm thankful that you're here to be a part of it, and thank you for joining the team here in the city, city of Cape Girardeau. Thank you, sir. All right, well, that's all we have for today, and thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at cityofcapegirardeau.org slash contact, um, and let us know what you want to hear from and what you want to hear about here in the city of Cape Girardeau. Thank you very much, Cape Girardeau. Have a good day.